He is the only grassland overlord who can libel Genghis Khan, and one of the most brutal conquerors in European history. He once led a hundred thousand Hunnic army to sweep through Europe, defeating nearly a hundred countries including the Eastern Roman Empire and Hungary. His army was notorious for its mercilessness, leaving no grass to grow wherever they went. He was known as the scourge of God by Europeans, a terrifying nightmare. We should rule the world! He is Attila. In the early 4th century AD, a group of Hunnic tribes, originally from Central Asia, gradually migrated to the steppes of Western Asia and Eastern Europe. With their fierce combat abilities, they caused significant impact on the local nomadic tribes. These Huns expanded their territory relentlessly, and their ferocity in battle made them unmatched even against the Germanic tribes, one of the three major barbarian groups in Europe. They even reached the borders of the Roman Empire. After just over a decade of development, the Hunnic tribes emerged as the new rulers of the grasslands, and it was in this environment that Attila was born. However, his childhood was exceptionally unfortunate. When he was six years old, his father was suddenly attacked by hostile tribes and brutally killed on the spot. Young Attila had no choice but to embark on a journey of escape, wandering on the vast grassland, when hunger became unbearable. He had to sustain himself by drinking horse blood. It wasn't until half a month later that his uncle, King Rua, found him, and Attila finally found a new home. After a long period of interaction, King Rua unexpectedly discovered that his nephew was no ordinary person. When he captured the murderers who killed Attila's father, the young Attila remained remarkably calm. Instead of demanding their execution, he only asked them to kneel before him in exchange for their lives. Kneel. Kneel to a boy. Submit to me and live. This scene shocked everyone present, but King Rua smiled with satisfaction. He knew that this Attila would become a great leader in the future. Fast forward 20 years, Attila has transformed into a vigorous young man, and his uncle King Rua has united the entire Hunnic tribes. Although the Huns have already dominated Western Asia, the ambitious Attila is not satisfied. He leads his army multiple times to attack the nomadic tribes within the Roman Empire, even sweeping through all the villages within a 150-mile radius. The accumulation of slaves and wealth only fuels Attila's arrogance. However, King Rua sees through his ambitions and warns him on the spot not to attack Rome. These words greatly frustrate Attila. Meanwhile, the Western Roman Empire also takes notice of this formidable Hunnic tribe. They know that the Eastern Roman Empire is incapable of resisting these barbarian groups and must find a way to stabilize the nomadic tribes. To achieve this, they send Flavius Aetius, the Roman Patricius, to negotiate. Flavius Aetius, a cunning strategist, offers over a thousand pounds of gold as a condition for an alliance with King Rua. They agree to jointly eliminate the Goths and divide the spoils. In this way, Rome not only manages to stabilize the Hunnic tribes but also seizes the opportunity to eliminate the Goths, a potential threat. Although Attila sees through Rome's ulterior motives, King Rua cannot resist the temptation of such immense benefits, and they reach an agreement. Three days later, King Rua sends Attila to lead the Hunnic army, along with the Roman Third Legion, to Gaul. What was initially expected to be a head-on collision between Western barbarians and Roman legions turns into a rout as the sun has already set on Rome's power. The fierce Goths become more courageous in battle, and within just two charges, they destroy the Romans' elite formation. This situation greatly worries Attila, seeing Rome's increasingly weakened state. He unsheathes his sword and leads his troops into battle. With the fierce Hunnic army joining the fray, the entire situation instantly reverses. They have no tactics, just a frenzy of hacking and slashing. Attila, like a war god, cuts down enemies one after another. This formidable fighting prowess leaves Flavius Aetius astonished, knowing that he must win over this man. Indeed, after one charge, the Goths are nearly annihilated. Flavius Aetius quickly extends an invitation to Attila, urging him to come to Rome and witness the true world. This statement strikes a chord in Attila's heart as he has long been filled with ambition for this ancient empire. Half a month later, Attila arrived in Rome with Flavius Aetius. He was immediately stunned by the grand welcoming ceremony prepared by the Romans, the towering magnificent buildings, the orderly procession, and the countless beautiful women were scenes he had never witnessed in the Hunnic tribes. The Roman emperor personally received Attila, fully aware of the importance of the alliance with the Huns. In the following months, Attila became completely immersed in the pleasures of the empire. Even the Roman princess, Lydia, expressed her affection for him. At this moment, Attila seemed to have lost his barbarian ambitions. However, one year later, the Hunnic king, King Rua, 
unexpectedly passed away. Upon hearing the news, Attila had to return to the Hunnic tribes. Before leaving, he assured Flavius Aetius that he would not attack Rome in the future. Upon his return to the Hunnic tribes, Attila engaged in a power struggle for the throne with his stepbrother, Bleda. As neither side could unify their forces, the ultimate decision had to be made through a duel to determine the new Hunnic king. In terms of personal combat abilities, Bleda was no match for Attila. After just three rounds, Attila ended Bleda's life with a single blow. Thus, Attila officially became the sole ruler of the Huns, and his glorious reign began. We should rule the world! From the beginning of AD 436, Attila embarked on his path of relentless expansion. He first took a year to conquer all the nomadic barbarians of Western Asia and Eastern Europe, and then swept all the way down the Danube through Eastern Europe, where both Roman dependencies and small independent states like the Finnish series had to bow down in the face of the brawny Hun hordes. All the royal families had to kneel and welcome Attila's arrival, and their country's treasures had to be handed over. If anyone dared to resist, the enraged Attila would strike them down without mercy. It was through such brutally ruthless plundering that Attila's infamous reputation spread throughout Europe. Numerous small nations chose to surrender without a fight, offering all their wealth as a sign of submission to Attila. Just ten years later, Attila's Hunnic Empire reached its pinnacle, stretching from the Caspian Sea in the east to the Atlantic coast in the west, from the Danube River in the south to the Baltic Sea in the north. All of these territories belonged to him, with over a hundred vassal states under his command. Every June, these vassal states would pay tribute as scheduled. But even so, the ambitious Attila remained unsatisfied. Starting from AD 447, he launched a massive invasion of the Eastern Roman Empire. Faced with the formidable Hunnic army, the Eastern Romans were powerless to resist. In the Battle of Constantinople alone, the Eastern Roman Empire almost faced complete annihilation. In the end, they were forced to submit to Attila's rule, paying an annual tribute of over 3,000 pounds of gold. From that moment on, Attila had no rivals in the entire Eastern European region. The only opponent that could stop his conquest of the world was the Western Roman Empire, the dominant power in Western Europe. However, Attila hesitated to launch an attack on the Western Roman Empire because of his previous alliance with Flavius Aetius. He needed an excuse to go to war. Meanwhile, the Western Roman Empire was also filled with fear after witnessing Attila's sweeping conquests in Eastern Europe. They knew that it was only a matter of time before the Hunnic army arrived at their doorstep. Only the patrician Flavius Aetius remained calm, still believing that Attila was a ruler who kept his promises. But as the saying goes, beware of doing favors for others, for they may return them. In AD 450, Roman Princess Lydia, who had conspired to rebel, was discovered and sent to a convent, in order to regain her freedom. She secretly reached out to Attila for help. She offered to marry him and promised him half of the Roman Empire's rule as her dowry. This news delighted Attila as he finally had a pretext for war. There's my pretext. In AD 451, Attila assembled a hundred thousand strong Hunnic army and officially declared war on the Roman Empire. As the sword of the war god was raised, all the Huns shouted in unison. This time, they were determined to continue their path of bloody expansion. Once again, it can be said that wherever the sunlight shines, as long as I wish it, it can be conquered. Under Attila's leadership, this fierce Hunnic army marched towards Roman Gaul, easily capturing it within a day. But Attila did not stop there. In just a month, they consecutively conquered 30 Roman city-states, including Belgium and Metz. This caught the Western Roman Empire completely off guard. They hadn't expected the Hunnic army to be so formidable. However, patrician Flavius Aetius still refused to mobilize his forces to confront them. He prioritized protecting the Roman capital, Ravenna, and firmly believed that Rome could withstand the Huns' onslaught. Little did he know that while their walls were strong and their defenses formidable, Attila was no ordinary adversary. After several failed attempts to storm the cities, he ceased direct assaults and resorted to long-range bombardment using catapults. No matter how sturdy their walls were, they couldn't withstand the relentless barrage of thousands of projectiles. After three days, the walls crumbled, and the ferocious Hunnic army stormed the city. The news of their success put immense pressure on Flavius Aetius, who realized that Rome was one step away from destruction. Despite the Roman emperor's notorious incompetence, Flavius Aetius decided to make a final stand. To do so, he had to approach various western barbarian tribes, including the Goths and Alans, who had fallen to Attila, and negotiate alliances by offering them land concessions. Thus, an epic battle between the western legions and the eastern nomadic tribes commenced. On September 20, AD 451, Flavius Aetius led a mixed army of 150,000 Romans to the plains near Chalens. They swiftly occupied advantageous positions on the hilly terrain. However, 
Attila and his Hunnic army paid no heed to their positioning. With just three words, Attila ignited the Hunnic warrior's fighting spirit. I say you are Huns in spirit! You are invincible! <laughs> Attila led the charge, and the rest of the Hunnic army followed suit, pouring out like an unstoppable tide. As they approached, Flavius Aetius ordered his forces to hold the hill at all costs, but the indomitable Attila charged ahead, wielding his sword. Suddenly, all the horses were entangled by hidden ropes, causing chaos among the Huns. It turned out the cunning Romans had set a trap. However, Attila was already on the scene. He ordered his soldiers to dismount and launch a frontal assault. With the loss of their horses, the Hunnic army's mobility was halved, and the Roman forces took advantage by rolling fireballs, disrupting the Huns' formation. The Huns had no choice but to rely on brute force for their charges. When the two forces clashed head-on, the ferocity of the Huns became fully evident. They engaged in a frenzy of slashing without any tactical finesse, relying solely on brute strength. However, after several rounds of combat, Attila suddenly realized something was amiss. Despite the remarkable ferocity of his troops, the unfavorable terrain and the well-equipped Roman forces resulted in countless casualties among the Huns, with no breakthrough against the Romans' elite phalanx. In desperation, he quickly ordered a retreat, ending the first charge in failure for the Huns. Although both sides suffered heavy losses, Attila refused to accept defeat. After a brief regrouping, he commanded his forces to launch a flank attack. The defending troops on the flank were the Goths, who had previously been subjugated by the Huns. As soon as the conflict erupted, the Goths were overwhelmed. Seeing the flank on the verge of being breached, Flavius Aetius had no choice but to order the reserve troops to reinforce the position. Yet, this played right into Attila's feigned attack, as he led his main force in another frontal assault. At that moment, the Roman legions were powerless to resist. The ferocious Hunnic army shattered Rome's elite phalanx with their mighty swords. Attila's forces nearly controlled the entire battlefield. Victory within reach. But at that moment, the Gothic king was suddenly struck by an arrow, mortally wounded and killed. His death completely enraged the disorganized Gothic army. These western barbarians, shouting for revenge, swiftly turned the tide on the flank, charging towards the main battlefield like madmen. This sudden turn of events puzzled Attila. But for the resilient Flavius Aetius, it brought a glimmer of hope. He immediately ordered the remaining Roman cavalry to join the battle, trapping Attila in a pincer movement. Although Attila couldn't comprehend the sudden reversal, he fought desperately against the bloodthirsty Goths. But perhaps fate was no longer on Attila's side. His sword, the sword of the war god, suddenly shattered, leaving Attila completely astonished, perplexed and unwilling to accept the outcome. Attila stood frozen on the battlefield. The defeated Hunnic army hastily provided cover for Attila's chaotic retreat, marking the end of this largest-scale battle in European history. From that point on, Attila no longer invaded Roman Gaul but turned his sights towards Italy. His three subsequent campaigns swept through the region with great force, even coming close to capturing the Roman Emperor. It is rumored that had it not been for the intervention of the Pope, the entire northern region of Rome would have been ravaged by the Hunnic army. Nevertheless, under Attila's terrifying dominion, the various European nations struggled to survive. They called this ferocious tribe the Scourge of God, but it seemed that every barbarian leader met an untimely end, and Attila was no exception to this curse. In the year 453 AD, the invincible Attila married a Germanic bride, and almost all the client states came to celebrate, creating a joyous atmosphere in the Hunnic tribe. However, they did not anticipate that Attila would suddenly die that very night. Under mysterious circumstances that remain unknown to this day, his body was only discovered the next day by his attendants. And in their anger, they immediately executed the Germanic bride with a single stroke. Three days later, a grand funeral was held for Attila within the Hunnic tribe. Hunnic warriors slashed their own faces with blades because, according to their customs, only a warrior's blood could mourn the passing of a hero. At the moment when the people burst into tears, the mighty ruler of the steppe fell, and the entire Eurasian continent experienced a shift in the balance of power. With Attila's sudden demise, the powerful Hunnic Empire collapsed instantly, and numerous tribes and client states chose to sever ties. Without Attila, the formerly conquered European barbarian tribes rose up in rebellion. In just two years, they drove the Huns back to Central Asia, causing this nomadic people who had almost conquered the world to vanish from history. Only the name of Attila remained deeply engraved in the memory of the European people. They would never forget this terrifying ruler of the steppe. I am a movie enthusiast. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next episode. You are invincible!